first one. Thank you. This is the Northampton Council on Aging Board Meeting, the Northampton Senior Services. Thursday, March the 12th, 2015. Our first method here is the public session. I don't see any members of the public here. Uh, also, the approval of the minutes. Somebody make a motion on that? I'll make a motion for the last minutes for last meeting. Mike seconded. And Mike seconded. Okay. Does anyone have any uh, additions, problems, or corrections to make on the, on the minutes? Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passed. Patty, I'm going to turn it over to Patty now for some special business here. Yes. Um, we have Mayor Narkowitz here today at our meeting and on Tuesday Mayor Narquitz and I met and um, there's a uh, new uh, direction um, for uh, our senior services and so um, in speaking with the mayor uh, it's it's an idea that can uh, truly work and can be a benefit to the community and it's um, trying to share what we have with another department so i'm fully behind it and i think um, with the mayor uh, putting it out to you um, and i'm sure there'll be a lot of discussion later on and there's a lot of detail to it um, you know because it's not just thinking of an idea it's really putting it into um, the process and having an end result so i'm going to turn it over to mayor narkowitz okay thank you and thank you for um for letting me come on short notice and obviously thank you for your service on the Council on Aging Board. Um, some of you may have followed in the newspaper um, that back on December 2nd, the uh, Board of Trustees of the Smith Vocational and Agricultural High School um, voted uh, three to two, um, I, was, I was in the minority, uh, but voted three to two um, to end a memorandum of agreement that they, uh, that they had struck with the Recreation Commission, that used to be called the Recreation Commission back in, um, back in 1991, um, that allowed us to locate the uh, Rec Department, which we now call the Parks and Rec Department, in Building H up at uh, Smith Vocational. Um, some of you um, it's, it may know where it is. It's located behind the athletic fields uh, next to what used to be the tennis court, but now is a solar array. Um, it was originally an ROTC shooting range. Um, it had been defunct for many years, um, and when the um, and and the uh, rec department uh, worked out a deal that uh, they would take over the space, they renovated it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, fast forward to the future, to the present. Um, Smith Vocational would like to use that space. They'd like to have the um, GCC. Uh, uh, move its um, LPN program, its licensed practical nurse program. Um, they were actually formerly at the VA Medical Center. Um, they got evicted uh, on January 1st from the VA Medical Center because the VA Medical Center is bursting at the seams. Um, and so GCC approached them about, uh, about locating the LPN program there. So they voted um, uh, in, in December, um, basically to um, end this relationship that they've had with the rec department. Um, and under the terms of the agreement that both bodies agreed to, um, either side had to give the other six months notice in order to um, vacate the facility. Um, or in our case, if we wanted to leave, we had to give them six months notice. Um, I did attempt to get an extension of that um, but, uh, but that was not successful. I was, um, it was another 3-2 vote uh, not to give us at least another six months or at least a year to be able to make the move. Um, they're under some time pressure because uh, GCC is now in a temporary space in Greenfield and their semester starts again in September and they want to be somewhere. So this began a search by myself and by our central services department of um, any potential available city space that we could locate the Parks and Rec Department. Um, now this is just the administrative offices of the Parks and Rec Department. It's about nine, it's about nine staff members. Um, and so we did a survey of all of our existing city buildings. We did a survey of all of our city school buildings. Um, we did look at commercial property 
uh, leasing commercial property, but as you can imagine, um, the, the lease rates for commercial property of that size is quite significant. Um, the, the space that they were in um, is roughly about a 1,400 square feet uh, uh, building. Um, uh, we actually need to get in. Yes, yeah, it's about 1,400 square feet. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's a long, narrow building, and it sort of just was put together with false walls. And then there's a sort of an unheated area at the back of the building. Um, so we were kind of looking for something, um, you know, in the in the 12 to 1,400 square foot range that we could replicate. Um, nothing exists in any of our schools, none of our city buildings, city hall is maxed out, the municipal building is maxed out. One space that we identified that we think um, has potential um, is the area here at the back of the senior center that had been originally um, built and designed to be a social daycare program. Um, and I think the concept originally was that the senior center would contract with a some kind of a private vendor to run a sort of a professional senior daycare service. Um, obviously, for all kinds of reasons, that ha that hasn't happened. Um, but the space is about 1,200 square feet. It's just shy of 1,200 square feet. Um, it has a separate entrance. Uh, it has um, separate restroom, um, and we feel that uh, given actually the symmetry between the missions of the two departments, um, that actually co-locating them here um, could, could, is worth giving a try to. Um, it obviously would be minimal cost. Um, there would be obviously the expenses of us moving their desks and other things. Central services would have to build you know, a counter of some kind, which they could do. They do it all the time. And partitions to kind of create office space. We'd obviously have to relocate the, um, the materials that are in the room now to other, either other parts of the senior center or in storage. Um, and obviously, uh, we would um, have to do other things relative to security and, and the doors and other th and phones and things like that. But in the grand scheme of things, um, and given our deadline, we think it's relatively easy for us to accomplish. Um, I say the symmetry of missions because in some communities, um, it's not uncommon to have um, rec or leisure services co-located with a senior center. Um, many of the thing, many of the mission, which is to try to provide activities for your constituents, are similar. Obviously, sometimes different age groups. Although seniors are certainly welcome to participate in rec programs. Um, so we actually think that out of a sort of a bad situation, I wish I didn't have to make this move. I didn't want to make this move. It wasn't something I was volunteering to do. Um, that, uh, that we can actually um, uh, give it a go and see how it works. Obviously, you know, the rec department, uh, the, rec, the rec parks and rec department will have to obviously see how it works for them. Um, they obviously, you know, and, and this doesn't preclude looking down the road for perhaps some other um, place for them to locate ultimately. Maybe, a, maybe um, you know, some kind of a new facility to support them. But obviously, um, given, um, given our financial constraints, the, we, we're really not in a position to propose building a brand new Parks and Rec Department building. We're actually finishing the new Florence Fields Recreation Center, and they're going to be constructing you know, a pavilion and a, and a concession stand and those kinds. So that, that's a pretty major undertaking that's now under construction and coming online. Um, you know, there will be cost savings to the city actually in, in by, by putting them in a city building because you know, currently we're paying for utilities, we're paying for uh, maintenance costs, custodial costs, snow plowing, all those things that we have to pay for separately. Um, those would now be kind of shared between the two departments. So that's what I would like to do. That's my, um, and, and that's really our, our best and only option given the time that we have. But I wanted to have a chance to talk to you about it. Obviously, you are the, the folks who help um, you know, guide our senior services department and provide advice and guidance to them. Um, and obviously, you have your, your ear to the ground of the wider community. So I thought it would be helpful um, to just 
talk about it with you and get your your questions, concerns, reactions, etc., to the proposal. Have you considered parking? My, my same question I'm going to ask parking. Yeah. So again, I want to stress that um, the the, um, the the building age that they currently use is not. It's a place that people come to like sign up for soccer yeah. and then they leave. It's a yeah, place yeah. they come to. It's not a place that they come for big programs or anything like that. It's an administrative office. Most of their programming takes place like at the aquatic center at JFK or it takes place at their many fields or. So really, this is, I mean, it's sort of their back office, if you will. Um, now, there will be the need for, uh, you know, you know, a, a parent may come to turn in their registration for, um, you know, for Little League or something like that. Um, if you've ever been to their office now, there's sort of, you walk in, there's a counter, there's a little window, and that person takes the registrations, et cetera. I can say that they, um, are in the process of trying to move a lot of that stuff now to online registration. They just bought a new system. And we actually think just the way society works nowadays that more and more people are going to just register online for things if we give them the ability to do that. So, but yeah, there would be, there would be foot traffic that would come in, uh, but we don't anticipate that, you know, 100 people are going to come for something happening here um, at once. So that's sort of, right now they have parking for their staff, and obviously we'd have to work on how that would be arranged and where we would figure out how to do that. Um, but we don't anticipate, unless they, unless like any other organization, they said we want to, you know, rent the great room to do an event, then obviously that would be like any other event. Mm -hmm. But just day-to-day -day operations, um, it's mostly the back office, the administrative, the business stuff, um, and then most of their programming people are generally out and about at Usanti Beach, or they're at Florence Fields, or they're at the Aquatic Center. They're out at all their various locations. I've registered for a water aerobics, and usually when I go to register, there's nobody there but somebody working. Yeah. And even at that, you could register at the Aquatic <coughs> Center in the nursery too yeah. for anything. So yeah, that's the other you, thing we've, we've tried yeah, to there's make. Never, it uh, there's yeah. probably two or three cars there when I've yeah. been. So yeah. what, you know what? You do so basically, you would need so nine spaces for the employees. Right, it's just that would be something we'd have to work on. I have yeah. to find out how many of them actually drive, but um, my that would probably have to be worked on. And Is there a possibility of uh, working something out with the housing authority? We could definitely talk to the housing. The end, yeah, we could definitely talk to the housing authority. We could explore. Um, we could explore other options. Uh, mm -hmm. We obviously don't want to take prime parking from clients and visitors to the senior center, right. so we could explore something with either, um, you know, either the housing authority or even some of our neighboring. Um, yeah. uh, it, it doesn't sound like the day-to-day -day traffic would be of any problem. These are fit people, so they don't mind walking. <laughs> you know, these are recreation people, so they shouldn't mind walking a little bit. Nobody drives a car like to walk. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you've researched it, but um, is there any room in any of the other schools? No, he just. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. we we did research it pretty extensively. I mean, a lot of our schools, even though our enrollment has gone down, many of our schools now, um, any excess space that they have has actually been leased out to other programs. Some of you may know Clark School. Um, now occupies a, several classroom spaces. They've created a whole suite at Leeds School where they do their work. Um, Head Start is now located in our uh, Jackson Street School. We have um, a preschool program at Bridge Street School. Um, like when my kids used to go to kindergarten, they were down in the basement, and now the school has shrunk in size, but now the downstairs is now a preschool. Um, that we run for the for the city, so there really is not space for us to do this. Believe me, that would be you know that would be easier. Um, and and same goes for like City Hall, Memorial Hall, um, and the and the Pachowski Building. There are no there are really no offices that could support this kind of an operation. Yeah. Go ahead. I just want, um, as I said earlier, there's there's so many. Um, nuances to this that yeah. you know can be worked out but parking was like one of my first yeah. thoughts because when we have larger events here parking is always what we're trying to think mm -hmm. about but I, we have a really good relationship with World War II Club and the Daily Hampshire Gazette 
and with the housing authority as you mentioned that you know I think that you know signage and a few other things that the parking you know unless it looks when like when we have five college here and you know there's 150 people and 120 of them come in a car then you know there are times that parking is going to be a problem no matter what um, so you know that that is like one of the things on the yeah. the agenda to figure out how it's all gonna but the rec department is basically Monday to Friday so yeah. it wouldn't interfere with any of our mm -hmm. weekend no. activities no. Yeah. yeah at all and all of their weekend yeah. stuff happens yeah. somewhere else with that one I know that sure. yeah. I know. are any of you familiar with the Bangs Community Center in Amherst because yeah. they share their yeah. senior services department and their leisure services department and it they actually share programming space as well and it works out very well there's um, if you go on the leisure services website, it has the, the services um, separated based on senior services and then just regular leisure services. So you guys could look at if you had any questions about something that's already existing and working very well. Yeah, I think the city of Salem recently did the same thing. They built, a, they, they co-located their two departments together. I think this would be a benefit to the direct department because I'm sure that there are seniors that don't know of things that are available. Mm -hmm and to have something on campus that they can i mean i bet a lot of people don't even know about the water aerobics that they're offered you know mm -hmm. those are kinds of things that would be beneficial i would think to the rec department and actually the rec department has said they may get ideas for programs that mm -hmm. they could develop mm -hmm. that would be recreation related that they could offer as well um the other thing i would say is there you know the um and this actually we just had a new i.t study done of our of our computer software and and one of the rec recommendations was to look at even um, the, you know, you guys have the My Senior Center program, and, the, and actually the um, rec department has something called Rec Tracker, which is like an all-in-one registration payment system and all that. And he was pointing out that like in Salem, they just share that for, so if you're registering for a bus trip or you're registering for Little League, they use that same program. It even can be set up for senior stuff. So there's a lot of possibilities for collaboration and sharing infrastructure and, and other things like that. They have a whole core of volunteers. You have volunteers. So I, you know, I think there could be some interesting benefits and collaborations that could come out of it. Um, after we work on all the kinks of uh, just the space and all that, all those things. But I mean, in terms of it's located in the far back of the building, so. This will um, be a much better drive than when you have to go to the rec department. Yeah, well, yeah, and a lot of people don't even know where the rec department is, or yeah. if you told them, you know, yeah. to get oh, yeah. there, they would know where Smith Folk is, but they wouldn't necessarily know yes, where it is. Yes, because it's way in the back. You yeah. go all the way through their yes. campus, way Past in the back. The roads and, are great, you know, that, yeah. you know. Um, where would we do the brown bag? But all those kinds of things have to be worked out. Yeah. I mean, the it's, it's just, I know there's there's a lot of pro there's a lot of programs that work back there, and and we just need to uh, figure out. When, you know, again, since I had a discussion, or the mayor had a discussion with me about this, that it's like I my head has just been um, I don't want to say spinning, but the wheels have been turning about how are we going to do this. And you know, one thing leads to another, and so then that there's a, a cause and a reaction to everything. So, you know, it, it's it's all doable. It's just figuring out all of the little pieces mm -hmm. to how this is going to happen. Yeah, and I want to acknowledge. I realize it's not going to be just like zero impact, because like you said, you, if you're mm -hmm. used to booking that as, you know, even though it's not a social daycare, it does provide a place if you need meeting space or things like that. So you would lose that. Um, so that is a downside, um, but again, in the grand scheme of things, um, you know, it's 1,200 square feet in a uh, 41,000 square foot building, or over what the total square footage is. So there's still a lot of space in the building. Hopefully, that could absorb those. Yeah. Um, there are times when we don't have a lot of space. No, I get in the building. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if you had built the, but if you'd actually had a social daycare going in there, you yeah, wouldn't be yeah, using yeah, yeah. it for meetings anyway. You'd have to have adapted to the rest of the space. So, I mean, it kind of cuts both ways. I get it. I mean, I just hate to say we're, our programs are on the upswing, and we're starting to get more and better. And mm -hmm. It's really starting to, and I think this is going to kind of put a little crimp in it. And I'm more concerned about that. Mm -hmm. But we do have some empty churches and some empty rectories. 
<laughs> yeah, I can't. Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't know that they were open. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They were open for others. They're stuff. certainly not for leads. <laughs> <laughs> That's a church and state problem. Man. Yeah. yeah. That, that yeah. may get very tricky. Yeah. yeah. And then no. And again, we need things that are handicap accessible and that are you know. Yeah. That's how. That's partly why the rec department moved when it did back in the. 90s because they were on like the second floor yeah. of the water department yeah. 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 which was not handicapped accessible it was leaky and had all kinds of problems and so that's so you know we really have to find a place that's handicapped accessible and easy for people to get mm -hmm. to and I mean this is obviously close to downtown it's cl it's on the bus route mm -hmm. so it also mm -hmm. gets allows people you know that Smith boat place was pretty much you had to drive there it was not really um, <laughs> Uh, uh, easy to get to by foot. So, um, mm -hmm. other questions, other comments? Can we make a deal? <laughs> <laughs> we need a stop sign over there. Yeah. We, we need, need a van. Road. We yeah. need a well, stop well, sign. I am, <laughs> I, am I, I did tell the senior uh, <laughs> services director yesterday that I am putting a van in the capital plan for this year. For um, us? Yes, a handicapped van to help you buy one of the vans you need. Oh, right. um, nice. uh, and then the other thing I told her was uh, the rec department actually has its own van um, that they'd be bringing to this to the table as well. I don't think it has a wheelchair, um, but they do have a, they have a van that they use for for teams and trips. We don't need one wheelchair van. What's that? We only need one one wheelchair van. Yeah. Yeah. We could have a, we couldn't have a van without the wheelchair. Oh no, I, we we need to have at least two vans with a wheelchair lift. Oh. Having another van mm -hmm. is a, a way to be able to plan trip um, pickup without thinking that person needs to use yeah. um, a wheelchair yeah. lift. Yeah. So yeah, it's advantageous. The stop sign. I mean, I know that's been an issue. <laughs> that's been right, I day. talked to you when you were on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a it's a whole it's a larger issue about traffic regulations and engineers and all the other things a larger um, issue than a van. so we that one we can certainly look at but it's uh it's not as easy as can't you just say we well, want a sign down there? those used to be that used to be the way you could do it <laughs> um, and that's how we got a lot of crazy stop signs that no one knew who put the world has changed yes yeah, so um, yeah. so we have to kind of follow the engineering process um, i don't understand so one other thing you did mention, uh, you might be willing to provide some storage. We have a lot of furniture yeah. back there, which yes, no, we would definitely. Um, we would def valuable stuff, and then we couldn't replace it without a lot of money. So no, we would definitely. Um, we have some storage uh, capacity, uh, and this is actually going to be an issue for the um, for the rec department as mm -hmm. well, because they have sort of a whole back area of their building. Uh, that's just kind of unheated space, but they have, you know, hula hoops and soccer balls yeah, and all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. So really we're going to have to find a place for yeah. them, a shed. Uh, but we actually have a, um, we have a very good uh, storage facility that we're bringing online. It actually was out at the old landfill. Um, there's a corrosion control building that was built there that's built like a, I mean, it's literally like a World War II bunker. It's a cement building. Um, it's completely airtight, air sealed, and it's no longer needed. And so we're actually trying to convert that into like an archive slash storage space for stuff people don't need on a daily basis, records, things like that, that we can put out there. Um, and then if people do need them, with some notice, we can go retrieve them. So we will be able to find... That would be a good, uh, or that type of thing would be a good spot, because this is furniture and you don't want it in the basement. Oh, no, so yeah, yeah. 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 No, we'd be able That'd to... Be um, and you may be, I don't know, you may also, there may be pieces you can incorporate into other areas that seem to be oh, yeah. um, But not all of them, but you know, not all of them. Yeah. 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 Exactly. No. I will. I will say that when we were in the process of building the center, because people were donating stuff to us, we actually at a building at the landfill had stored some things. Yeah. And, um, it's probably that same building. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so we would be able to do that. That's not a big issue. Yeah. Jim, did you have another question? Yeah. Um, this is back there in the recesses that I really can't remember. Maybe you can, since you're so much younger than I am. Um, didn't we talk about using that space? right after the building was built for a city project or something like that that was downplayed because of the legalities of what the building was going to be used for. Yeah. 
I can actually address that because before I even, before I did any other research on this, one of the other issues we were concerned about is that we did use, um, we did use community development block grant monies, right. federal community development right. block grant monies on the project. Um, and so, and those funds have restrictions on what you can use them for and then what the facility can be used for. Um, so before I even, you know, entertain this, or I, I actually wrote to the Department of Housing and Urban Development, and I asked them hypothetically, um, what would we be allowed to do given the fact that we had used CDBG monies? Actually, interestingly, we, um, we actually just paid off the CDBG portion of the building that's been paid off. But um, we provided all kinds of information on how much we paid, how much, um, how much of it was CDBG money, how much of the space we were planning to use for parks and recreation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And they have sent us a letter um, basically saying that given the fact that it's, a, it, it's like 5% of the building, um, uh, that um, and, and that the vast majority of the building will still be used for as a senior center uh, that they would authorize it it would not be a violation of any um, of anything I know that there have been issues over time about who the building can be rented to and um, you know and who what uh, city departments could use the building for um, but so we did ask them that very question we in very big detail and they turned around and asked us for all kinds of information on how much we paid and what the construction costs were. We gave them all the CDBG records. And so we do have a letter from HUD saying that it's okay, that it won't violate CDBG. And I gave a copy of that to, um, to the senior center director, yeah. So we did, we did consider that. That was the immediate concern that I had about it. Um, so. so then this is pretty much a done deal then? Well, um, uh, unless you've got a really big basement you can lend me between now and uh, June 2nd. I, I, we're, we're really, you know, we've got to get them out of there by June 2nd. The other thing that's tough, and I feel bad for them, uh, you know, they've been, and you know, I, I was quoted in the paper as saying that I was not happy about the way Smith Oak handled this whole thing, um, and I'm not, and they didn't handle it very, I mean, literally, uh, they didn't, they didn't, they showed up with tape measures um, and started measuring people's offices during the work day um, is how the staff found out that this is what they were thinking. Um, and so, uh, and then the, it, so a lot of this had been sort of cooked up behind the scenes and then it kind of came to the Board of Trustees, which I sit on, although I'm sometimes left out of a lot of that behind the scenes stuff. Um, <laughs> So I voted against it because, and I also asked for another six months, didn't happen. Um, but this is literally like the busiest time of the year for, this, yeah. for the yeah. rec department. They're planning Little League, they're planning, so if you could think of a worse time to say, yeah. you're gonna pick up and move, this would be it. So yeah, given the time constraints, given the, the, the space needs, um, this is what we really have to do. So, uh, but I wanted, I, I wanted to talk to you about it so you at least understand the thought process and, um, and that you wouldn't think that this is just, you know, we're just doing this willy-nilly, that we really have thought it out. Um, and I, you know, in terms of renting, we just really couldn't, I, I couldn't justify spending thousands and thousands of dollars to rent a space when we do have this space that could be used. So, yes, Mike. So we have our operation yes. will be the same as ours, so we wouldn't have to hire a monitor or anything. Yeah, anymore. I mean, my, my goal of this is they have regular business hours, but my goal also is in working with the way the building would be set up, is that we could create separate, you know, some separation so that there would be, um, if, if a staffer had to come in to get something or do whatever, we're going to try to have it be that they would just come in through the parks and rec entrance and go in and get them. yeah um i know the doors don't currently function that way but we think we can retrofit them so that they would so that the set it would be segregation between um between the two and obviously you know Anne marie is a city employee and a city department head and so um it wouldn't these are all city employees it wouldn't be like there'd be you know volunteers wandering it off the street um, if they did come in off hours it would be for that kind of thing how many employees? What's that? How many employees? Uh, they have nine employees. Um, 
So what we envision doing is, you know, taking the space um, and in addition to creating some kind of a, a counter reception area, using partitions to just create little desk spaces for people. Um, and so we would have our central services people kind of lay that out. I mean, it's a downsizing of space, um, but I think the space they have now, could, you know, if you were to do it all over again, you could probably use it more efficiently. Um, it's just, if you've seen it, it's, it's a long, narrow building. It was a shooting range that they turned into office buildings. So it's not like high level construction or anything like that. So we think it's doable. Um, based on other offices and the number of people we have in other offices, we think it's, it's doable. So yeah. Any other questions or comments? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank Again, you. Uh, we'll, I will do everything, and I know I've already said I want to work, you know, put together a planning team with the with the staff here and the central services and with REC, um, so that we can make sure that the transition is as smooth as possible and non disruptive <clears throat> non disruptive to you or the REC uh, folks, um, so we can make this happen smoothly. I just didn't want I wanted to let you know about it personally, um, so that it would not be you would be hearing about it or hearing about it third hand or anything like that. Do you have like a date when this is going to be effective? Well, um, it has to be by June second. So, uh, you have to be out. Yeah, they have to be out of the building, and so I prefer to just time it so that the moves happens, so that you know I don't want to put them in a temporary and then right. here. Yeah. So. So the clock starts now, um, and so we'll get to work on it and um, start uh, planning all these logistics that we'll have to have. I would imagine Central Services do most of the work during May to prepare. They would, and they have all the in-house staff, electricians, carpenters, all of this. We don't foresee we're gonna have to hire anybody on the outside. Um, you know, the rec department has you know desks and file cabinets, and actually they have Interesting. They actually have the, a lot of a lot of their furniture is from the former Northampton State Hospital, so they have these sturdy wooden desks and things. So um, it's hard to pick them up. They might be heavy, but uh, but they're sturdy, and we just think we can move what they need and reuse them. They'll have to obviously offload some stuff, some extra stuff that they don't need, um, and we'll have to think about you know things like computers and phones, but all of that. You yeah. know, luckily this building was built with you know all the state of the art systems and things like that so it's not like we're going into a you know an empty shell or something like that that doesn't already have all that stuff so now it's just a matter of working with the electricians to make sure they have phone jacks and and the separate phone number and all those different things so that there's no you know we don't want people calling you having to answer their phones or vice versa or any of that but we can do that so oh, that's good Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Thanks for letting me interrupt your meeting. And um, thank you. We'll see you. Okay. Take care. Okay. Next uh, piece of business is a staff report. Joanne Brooks, Media and Marketing Coordinator. I passed out uh, an application for ads for the Con Street Chronicle. Yes, I did. Thank you. And um, this is what we sent out to respective advertisers from Con Street Chronicle to help with our mailing. And um, we've received some, and we're just about to do another round. The way it works is from June, uh, August to June, there's six issues, every, you know, bi monthly, a total of six issues. So we try to have them bill it in one cycle rather than people coming on in. Um, August, September, October, four, six issues and me having a bill, you know, at all different times. We try to have it in one cycle. If they want to go for three issues, they'll just bill for the three issues and so on. So that's what we're, this is what we're doing today. And the piece we add, we are going to add, Patty and I had some discussion as to how we could maybe get some more assistance with the mailing of this to the Northampton seniors who are 60 and over. Is, um, approaching businesses and saying if you sponsor one of the mailings which is about two thousand dollars you'll get a full page color ad in our country chronicle for that one issue which they would probably pay about that amount anywhere else so we're going to try that approach and see if we can 
bring in more. We don't know whether it will work. We're hoping it does. So we're going to approach some places and try that approach as well, along with these. You know, we'll send that. We'll add that to this, to these options. And that way they have a choice of what they want to do. We have a new contract for the mailing. Every year we have to renew the contract for the mailing. And it was awarded to Daily Hampshire Gazette. And because they've been doing a wonderful job, so, you know, and the pricing has been reasonable. And so uh, Jordan and Dan are the two folks that I work with over there, and they're wonderful. Every time I've had a, a concern or a problem with any of the, the issues, the mailings, the printing, whatever, they've taken care of it, they've helped us out. The program that I use, I've learned like day one when I started here, so I kind of self-learned it. Mm -hmm. And the folk, um, Dan, is a little bit more versed in it. He went and took some classes on it as well. He's been using it longer than I have, so we have the contract that he will assist at no extra cost if I have questions, so it's been real helpful for that. So, uh, you know, we're looking forward to the next year with them as well. I went for a a little tour over there. There were no presses running, but it was pretty amazing, the, the, press, the presses and the paper and everything. The next issue of the Constitution Chronicle will be submitted for printing on March 23rd, which is a week from Monday. Mm -hmm. And we'll go out during that week. What happens is I submit it to them. They print it on Tuesday, Wednesday, and they bring it to the post office. They even bring it to the post office for us. Mm -hmm. And it's mailed out, and then people get it when the post office delivers it. <laughs> Hopefully within the next day or two after they bring it to the post office. And what happens with the mailing list is they have a soft piece of software that when I submit the list, that if the post, I don't know how it does it, but it checks the names and addresses, and any of them that are incorrect, they'll come back to me and say, please fix this for the next time around. I'm doing something a little different this time because we've, we're transitioning over to my senior center to try and have everything in my senior center so we can have one place to have all the information we can pull out of. So this will be the first time that we pull the mailing list from my senior center. So it should be interesting to see how many phone calls. I didn't get my country model. <laughs> so, you know, we went through the list that I had inherited from you know, when I got here, we went through that, made sure all the people were in my senior center. If they weren't, we added them in there and so on. So we're hoping we didn't miss too many if we did or whatever the circumstances are. For the mailing list, the actual postal mailing list, we mail out about a little over 3,800 pieces to folks in Northampton, Florence, and Leeds who are over 60. But that's going to continue to change because what I'm now attempting more so to do is try and keep up with folks who turn 60 within, you know, from that time frame, get them on the mailing list, and then we'll, we can get some phone calls like, why am I getting this? I don't want this. Or, oh, this is really nice. Thank you for sending it to me. Can I make a donation? And we say, yes, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it's, it's really, you know, coming along because we wanted to do that for a while and it's taken a while to cross everything. And for email, and some folks have an email, we have a total of about 166 folks who have an email to them. I mean, we're trying to get more. 166. Really? That low? Yeah. Yeah. We're trying to get more to have an email, but some people like their, it to, you know, to see the color and have a piece of paper and printing, so that's okay. We're not a generation of emails. Yeah. 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 Just a lower lower group of the group. Yeah. <laughs> the rest of the seniors are really for ad for uh, subscriptions and things for out of town folks and for those who are fifty five to fifty nine, we ask that they pay a subscription fee for the six issues of eighteen dollars for the six issues. And we're about to do that round for, for the upcoming year from August to June. So we're gonna be mailing out to folks who are out of town, um, or between the ages fifty five to fifty nine asking and if they, we don't receive any information from them by June, I think it was June 30th I had on the postcard, we're going to drop them off the list. We're not going to wait and say, oh, well, maybe, maybe, maybe. Or, you know, if we don't hear from them, we're going to drop them off the list. Because that'll help with our costs if, if they don't get back to us. But these are already people who are subscribers, right. Right. not that we're contacting everybody 55 to 59. So right. if they want to renew, great. If they don't, then they'll be dropped. Yeah. Um, Kate, a quick question is, yes. what's the subscription fee for an emailer? 
Six dollars. Okay. Yeah. So that's for out of town and fifty five to fifty nine, right? It's not for Northampton seniors. Right. right. But North, Northampton seniors don't. Yeah. You know, they don't pay. Just like the mail for emailers, they don't. They yeah. don't pay. But fifty five to fifty nine. Does that cover the cost of mailing the six issues? Yes, it does. It does. Yeah. 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 Um, Okay, so subscriptions I mentioned, uh, advertising I mentioned, donor directory, once a year we do a donor, a donor directory drive or mailing, which we send out a postcard asking for $15 or whatever they can afford, <coughs> whatever they want to uh, donate, and their name gets published in the December issue of the Con Street Chronicle. So that's another help to defray costs as well. And what I'd like to do this year on the reminder card is put a specific date. If we don't receive your payment by this date, your name, you, we will still accept your donation, but it, it may not be published in the Pond Street Chronicle. You know, so that way they can, they can get them in there. We'll still, you know. Um, still working on publicity, press releases, calendar updates, posters. I'm still mailing posters out to different people and people are starting to um, ask if they can put posters up. <coughs> Some of the instructors, facilitators are saying, help, you know, I'll help you give me some posters. So it's, it's starting to, to increase a little bit as far as help, having people help to get some of the posters and publicity. But myself, when I go out, I always look to see where we can put, you know, if we can put posters out there. And there aren't a whole lot of places who have post places where you can put posters up. There are there are a lot who do, but there are a lot who don't as well. So, um, and working with the rest of the staff and volunteers on any projects and things. So that that's a piece. And one last thing uh, as a administrative thing for here for the uh, board meetings, I have a list of all your names and addresses and emails. Uh, what we did with the intention of this was, if you gave me your email address, I would not mail you know, a hard copy to you unless you asked me to. So to cut down you know, a little bit of the cost. So with that, if anybody gets email but wants a hard copy or vice versa, please let me know. Okay. And that's it. Any questions? I would make a comment. You're doing a really great job on the web page. Thank you. It's really working a little bit. Thank you. You see a lot of hits on it, so. And we do have our Facebook page too, yep. you know, so we have 178 likes. We were at 39 a little about a year and a half ago, we're up to 178. So it, it's slowly progressing. And Crystal helps out too. She, her and I, between her and I, she'll put out some posts and, you know, we'll share it. We have a Twitter so, page. Twitter page. Follow us. Yeah. <laughs> you have a Twitter page, don't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Crystal set all that up. I'm not really versed in Twitter, so Crystal took that on. So that was a nice help. <laughs> We're at Camp Seniors. <laughs> at Camp Seniors. <laughs> right. So, if there are no questions, that's it for me. I'm, ju I'm just going to add that. Um, the all the revenue is what supports the paper. That's how we can publish both the 16-page newspaper and the insert, and pays um, part of Joanne's salary. So um, that's why we're always looking for additional resources um, for the the paper. Okay. Any more comments on that? Questions? We'll go on to the finances. I've now stopped the FY um, OM and PS account. Uh, uh, so we're almost down in our salary. If you see up at the top, PS is the personal services that. Um, there's not a lot left there, but again, you know, we're responsible for transferring money from our accounts to pay for salaries. You know, again, every year we have a portion of our budget that we um, provide versus what the city um, appropriates. So that's two ways that our budget is, is funded. Um, and we still have some um, funds in our OM account um, to cover our costs. We just, um, well, when I get to the building, I can talk about that. Um, so we're, right now we're okay and we have money that we're gonna transfer. I did receive um, a while ago the 
check from the Department of Elder Affairs for our formula grant. So we have the full funding, uh, which supports positions here. Uh, that's what it's used entirely for. It's a little over 46,000. So that will get um, transferred from that grant account into the personal services, as other income will be as well. So that's, that's FY15. Any questions? Uh, FY16. Yep, on uh, Monday morning I have my budget hearing with the mayor, and um, it was to be level services which means that you're not supposed to add any additional programs that would cost you extra money. Um, I will say that we do have the benefits counseling um, program that we were provided a three-year $90,000 grant. So that's a new service that we're providing, but it's funded. It funds itself, um, so that has been added. Uh, but otherwise, um, you know, but we always, we always add new programs. Um, we just aren't going to get re reimbursed through our city budget for it. So we can add what we want because we believe in keep it going with our, our population. That's another bargaining chip for the room. Yeah, the city's not going to pay another city department to rent a room, mm -hmm. I don't think. No, I, don't I, I think that if, maybe if we, if we could demonstrate what we make in fundraising and using that room um, for like room rentals and things like that, maybe we could get additional money. But <laughs> well, part part of my um, yeah, the year was the budget, but now with this um, situation, it's like here's here's what is going to change because we aren't going to be able to do the kind of rentals because we're going to need the great room yep. yeah. for programming, not for rentals. And you know, as I always say to any person calling um, for a rental because they make it sound, and not everyone, but that they should be able to use the building and should be able to not have to pay. Um, but I always say that, you know, we're here for seniors. The, our space is for seniors. So, um, you know, if it can get worked in. So, you know, that's that's our mission is to provide um, in a number of things, recreational, social, um, health-related, nutrition, all of those kinds of things are, um, know what we should be doing um, for our population so, but um, you're okay with this room being given away it's <laughs> given away um, I, I met with the mayor well yeah I have a monthly meeting with the mayor and this is one of the topics and so you know I, I um, support it and it, it can work you know it's, it's going to be a big challenge because as I said I just keep thinking of all of the pieces to put together and you know, it will happen on um, June 2nd. Yeah, I, I'm going to say I was thinking that there was a little more time, but there, it doesn't sound like it. But I've already been thinking about what's on the schedule, what needs to get changed, what we're going to be used for what now. Can something change in the lobby? So there's a lot of things. Where can we find more storage? Um, so again, it's like a, a, um, a draft thinking in progress. It's like a mudslide coming that, you know, you have to get out of the way and, and um, put the pieces together. But it's such a beautiful room and we work so hard for it. It's just that we said this is a senior center and it's for the seniors and all of a sudden we're doing a backflip on that. That's the only thing that really bothers me. You know, we're going against what we always said we were doing here. We worked hard for this building and to give part of it away, and that's a big part. You, you, many people work very diligently on this, and, this and, building. But everything here belongs no. officially to the city. It I belongs mean, to the seniors, not the whole city. Well, it, everybody who pays a tax is where he gets the money to pay his budget. I mean, I don't think Patty's got any alternatives. I don't that's know. That's the issue. That's yeah. the issue. But it's a I, done but, deal. But you know what? Whether I think we like it work, or not. Whether you do or not, but maybe you have to make the best of what and hope that there is a positive end to it, that you might get more seniors. But this is forever. Out. This isn't a one-shot deal. You know, they're going to be here temporarily. This is forever. Well, we're all going to be here temporarily anyway. We're going to have to wait forever. None of us are. Yeah. Yeah. But I think, you know, Barbara um, and Mike, I'm trying to think of the people who were here the longest 
with the beginning point of thinking about a senior center mm -hmm. and then it coming to fruition and we you know, had a site committee and then we had um, mm -hmm. a building committee and you know we th this whole thing started in July of 2001 to have a senior center so you know what I'll say is that there was a lot of um, fundraising a lot of special events there was um, it was non-stop to try to get money and the deal was um, or the agreement was that the city would build it and then anything in this building um, came from fundraising it came from the capital campaign it came from donations from people who you know knew we needed a copier and this is just an example a copier so they got the copier for us and you know our, our community has been very very generous I see this as yes it's a senior center I'm looking at it like this is you know just something that's you're, you're working collaboratively collaboratively with another department to try to let that department survive in the city with whatever all those challenges are and you know that you know there's a beginning point and hopefully an end point and that um, that it can it can work I and think it, we have to keep in mind that change happens oh yeah and, and unfortunately we don't always like the changes but they I'm sure the mayor wasn't too crazy about parks and recreation being thrown out yeah I'm so sure that started is. the whole thing so yeah. uh, you yeah. can't. And, and you know, maybe it isn't people well, sitting here thinking oh. that it's not your responsibility or it's not my responsibility to figure out how this all can work for the rec department because we are here for seniors. And you know, but that that to me, that le and I'm going to only speak for myself. That's like sort of tunnel vision. That you know, I try to look at myself as a team player. That you you want to have cooperative efforts with other departments you know maybe it's the DPW so we get plowed out all of those kinds of things it's like a, you know a dance with um, you know all of the people that you're affiliated with in the city just so it all can keep working not that it makes any difference but I wonder how they feel they the right department the feel yeah yeah I haven't I haven't well, I think they're happy <clears throat> you don't think they're happy no Oh, leaving first around. Oh, oh yeah, I'm sure leaving. Not happy. Maybe yeah. coming here. I don't know. Yeah, they're not happy leaving. No, oh, yeah. like it there. Busy season, and, yeah. and I mean the flyer just came out in the paper yeah. a couple yeah. of days ago. Yeah. So programs yeah. are instituted. And I think most of our planning actually, and, and, and Patty's planning is going to be how to preserve the senior center mm -hmm. without that section. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll let the uh, central services and the mayor take care of how they do the separate the, uh, the telephone, separate the yeah. electricity, separate the, the yeah. lock from the door, the alarm system, all that sort of thing. Yeah. We're going to be mostly concerned with, I think Patty's going to be mostly concerned with, yeah. where can we put what that we need. And that's mm -hmm. going to be most of the plan. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. I said, you, we couldn't have anybody better than you. You're a person who sees all sides, and that's what needs to happen. We are yeah. very, very fortunate. I think so, too. So it's a, um, a plan in progress. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I'd be um, happy to speak to anybody because I'm sure <laughs> that I'm going to hear a lot of things. Yeah. We uh, all are. You're, okay. you're absolutely right, Jim. Uh, you, yes. Yeah. yeah. But um, well, that's why I we have to know what we're doing before we can. Yeah. So that we, when we <laughs> talk to other people, we're at least talking with. That one, that not one voice, at least one purpose. Right. So, with the recreation department and Marie Mosha, who's the director there, um, we've worked on projects before. Oh, she's great. Um, we've done a um, survey Perfectly. with them, uh, and you know, she's. I think she's the person who believes in you know collaborating and cooperation and what can we do together and how it can all work. So some things will be that we're working together. Others, it's like, here's recreation and here's the senior center, but. Mm -hmm. yeah. She, so should, it, she yeah. should be here at the next meeting. Um, she could be, actually, you know, I will say that um, after this, because the mayor was going to speak with the um, Council on Aging Board, that it's sort of now it's out, mm -hmm. it's, um, it's televised, that Sunday. people are gonna know that Ian Marie and I will be meeting, but directly after this meeting, um, I have a meeting with my staff um, where a lot of um, discussion will occur. So. 
I think what we could have good uh, if we could ask you to come to maybe the next or one of the board meetings in the future. And uh, you know, just to meet her if nothing else, and so that she can meet us. Excellent idea, Carl. Okay. Uh, any more discussion on the budget? Uh -huh. go to the director's report, and you just keep going. Oh, another thing. Another thing. Yes. I have to put my two cents in this. Of course. Did you get the van thing in writing? <laughs> oh. Um, well, now that the mayor said that, I can I can That's speak to it. Yeah, yeah. a lot of people here that heard it. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, on television. <laughs> yeah. that, I, I had um, talked with the mayor and this numerous occasions, you know, that we are doing the kick the tires campaign, and that I did go to capital improvements to request a van. Um, and so at our meeting on Tuesday, my meeting with the mayor, I had asked, you know, what, with capital improvements. Um, are we slated to be part of some department that's going to get a, a request funded? And so we are going to have a van funded through capital improvements. So there's up to $65,000 for one of the uh, vans with the lift. The Cap Kick the Campaign, Kick the Tires campaign will fund a second van, uh, which is very important. We really, in order to have a functioning, really ongoing transportation program, need three vans. But boy, to have two to start with is mm -hmm. fantastic. Yeah. Um, so, so we will be having one as of July 1st. There's funding available for a van. I'm going to be working with Central Services um, to uh, get that in place. If, if there's a bid. Um, of course, we have to go out to bid, but it could be the state has a bid list. And then with Kick the Tires campaign, we'll be able to um, purchase the second one. And so the, let me just jump ahead since we're mentioning the Kick the Tires campaign, that um, the last insert listed that um, that we had 31700 and seventy-seven dollars and thirty cents, and um, I received a twenty thousand dollar contribution Ooh. from her past and um, for the kick the tires campaign or for whatever we might need it for. So we do need it for the van. So um, there's some additional money in our gift account that we will put towards the van so it really looks like um, maybe with some additional um, funds we are going to be able to have the second van. Well, possibly when you when you go out to bid and they find out what dealership is going to do it if they if maybe if you get they know that two are going to be purchased right, it might be a bargaining tool yeah, right yeah, you yeah, throw in a big white coin yeah. and you get one yeah. free. Yeah. <laughs> You're a senior, you're a senior point. Two, I mean, that's... Yeah, so it's been, uh, you know, a lot of hard work for this. And I, again, I thank our community um, for being so supportive of it. I mean, we get contributions from people in many other locations other than just Northampton, Leeds, or Florence. Um, so, again, very, very grateful for it. So we have over 50,000 in that uh, campaign now, to get the with the twenty thousand increase. Yeah, you know, actually yes, it's fifty one thousand seven hundred and seventy dollars and thirty cents. So we got the corned beef and cabbage. Okay, yeah, Sunday there'll be some hundreds of dollars for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's gonna be very expensive. Yeah. <laughs> it is so. expensive this year. I think five dollars Okay, so <laughs> that was <laughs> alrighty. So Jennifer Carberry was hired and she started yesterday. She's filling the vacancy of Helen Roman Walters, who was the medical transportation and um, oversaw the fitness center. So Jennifer um, started, as I said yesterday, and she'll be working 19 hours a week, which is the same as Helen did, and she'll be working Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So we are thrilled that that position has been filled and thanks to everybody including Chris who's put a lot of time into um, training Jennifer and also um, for filling in the gaps where um, fitness center people had to be called for orientations and you know there's just a lot of pieces to every program that we do here. 
fitness is one of the ones that has many pieces, as well as medical transportation, both of which are very important. Um, I've known Jennifer since 1985, and you couldn't have picked a better woman. Yeah, Jennifer also did an intern here um, about two years Great. ago. Uh, okay, so mark this down, everybody, because if you were going to come see Emmett Schmarzo from Elder Affairs in March, it got switched. So it's not the end of March anymore. He's coming April 16th, and it's a morning presentation. So April 16th at 9 o'clock is probably when it's going to start. Usually it's like refreshments. Um, to start with and then it starts around 9 30 but i'll give you the exact time frame of everything but it is april 16th well, what was the former date on that i think well, it was march 26th march 26th yeah. yeah. what day is that it's a thursday yeah. um preparations for the corned beef dinner are ongoing um as of monday morning we sold out um, we sold 125 tickets. Wow. We have a great band coming, the Pikes. We have a great crew of volunteers, and many thanks, because I know the meal will be wonderful, is uh, John Kaczynski and Paul Damon, and of course Barbara's in there, and then there's some additional crew people who always are helping at this. Um, so we're already talking about if this happens next year that it probably gets bumped up to 150 or 320 people. I'm just <laughs> you know something? The church is not happy. You know, I, I can't. And I never, and I saw Bob Gibwitz the other day, and I said, You folks, you never schedule anything in March because you're in competition with the Irish. Mm -hmm. And I said, You're Polish. Move it up. Mm -hmm. And he said, Next year, I think they're going to do it in April. They're okay. hammed, hammed in. Yeah. I never even knew it was. Happen. Oh, yeah, they were both in the It was a surprise to us. I just worked out here two weeks ago. Yeah. It was a surprise. But, yeah. Yeah. So, I also going to say is so many things get planned, and it's, you know, it, it, you pick a date and then you go with it. Because we actually changed this date um, oh, yeah. one time. Yeah. It was going to, I think, be Saturday, and we had to switch it to Sunday. Um, but, you know, a lot of people, there were a sufficient amount of people that do not care for corned beef. In your in, at the church and, and so you know so, so if they want to go to the ham dinner then they can go to the ham dinner even with our St. Patrick's Association banquet that we had at the end of um, February we offered white fish this year also and we had 24 people opt to have the white fish okay. and everybody else has corned beef and cabbage but not everybody liked it so it's good it gives them a chance to go someplace else yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we're very happy that we sold yeah. the tickets. Um, How many? I think it was slow, 125. And that's what, that was our limit, <coughs> 125. Wow. They maxed out very good. So, yeah. and you know, we've had, uh, when we've done the Harvest Dinner Dance, I think we've gone up to 175 people. And, you know, for that, we had a, a band and you had dancing. So, you know, we have enough tables that you can have 200, people in there if there's 10 people on every table. And you know something? I bet you a buck you would have sold out if it was 200. Well, I'm going to say that I received a number of phone calls because people wanted eight tickets, they wanted four tickets, they wanted two tickets. And um, Saturday I worked at our thrift shop and um, two people, so that was a total of um, five tickets. Um, so. And you know what's another consideration? It's an excellent meal, as we know, and it's ten dollars. Right. Our St. Patrick's one was twenty. Yeah. Well, you had an awards yeah. thing, so I can. Yeah, I know, but I mean, it was. And that was a big fundraiser. Too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, and we did. We made over two thousand dollars. That's great. That's good. But will the band be playing? I mean, the uh, music be playing when the great room doors open. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. So it's like a. Yeah, and, and the room. whole thing is like there's not a program. Right. Come on in. in Come on in and eat, yep. and we have Enjoy. music, and then, then you're yeah. done, and then keep talking, and then the doors close. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can move along somewhere else. Um, uh, Representative Colcott, who is our state rep, um, has uh, started office hours here again. Um, so two of them are planned April 13th and May 11th, so it's good to have um, either Peter or his rep come um, here. 
for office hours. So that's 9 to 10 on either April 13th or May 11th. Um, the Health and Safety Fair, the 13th annual, as I've mentioned before, is underway. And right now we have 26 exhibitors. It's not until May 7th, but it's nice. We always try to get the information out early. Um, and we usually sell out. There's um, 40, 40, no, there's 60 something vendor 67 or something like that um, so it's it's a very um, time-consuming event but it's really wonderful because so many vendors exhibitors are here and it's all under one roof so people get a lot of information and free and stuff demonstrations that's true and free things <laughs> so that's May 7th and some of you will probably get a call from me because of what we need for volunteers and you're going to be serving the lunch again? This yep, and, again? and John Kaczynski is going to run the kitchen. So okay. we'll be having lunch, which again, when we have a big event like that, it's um, very helpful to us to have the bistro open. The coffee shop um, is wonderfully um, <coughs> many sales, as well as the mini sale table and the gift shop and the books. So we'll so be having uh, servers again, mm -hmm. like we did last time? Yes, yeah, vendors like that. I mean, people, we have volunteers who go to the exhibitors and take orders because um, we hand out menus, so they yeah. they like that. I was on that last year. It was very, it was very effective. They really appreciated it because they didn't have to leave their station and have to come in yeah. and stand in line and wait for things. Um, the Florence Bank Award Ceremony was here on March 4th. And I think I had mentioned previous meeting that we were going to be getting an award. And when I say we, it's Elder Vision Inc. Um, Friends Group. Um, so we were awarded $2,542, which is great. Um, so I went back to look since Florence has been Florence Bank's been doing this since 2002. Every year we've received funding. Um, <coughs> And again, it goes through Elder Vision Inc. because you have to be a 501c3. That thus far, including this year, we've received $25,571, which has gone to a variety of things um, through Elder Vision Inc. for the senior center. And last year, the money was earmarked for the van, and this year, the money was earmarked for the van. So this year, I'll, I'll pass this around. Uh, we were the 11th highest vote getter. For this, and they're uh, a great group to have in our building. It's just a nice event, brings so many different people in from all avenues and agencies. Yes. And Bob was here, Barbara was here, and there's a picture that's on our um, website and maybe Facebook as well of uh, the check that we were holding. And special thanks to Barbara Fungarelli because she really <coughs> gets people to sign up um, to vote for us. Did you all sign for this time? <laughs> That's right, this is a new year. <coughs> um, today we did our annual Make the Irish Soda Bread. We did, I think, 50 loaves. I could be wrong, could be more, could be less. Um, so, Alex? I'm sorry. Oh. Alexis helped us. Uh, I, one, two, three, four, five. I had um, five people, or five, six people who helped today. And we got it done pretty quick. And some of it's for sale. It's a fundraiser. Um, we also <coughs> have this bread at the dinner. Um, in the past, it was at uh, the Panalaki that served it. So there's some for sale, and it's um, part of our budget. Um, so thank you. Alexis and everybody else who um, helped and you'll see some pictures in the next paper um, we're going to be making some purchases with our gift account funds uh, that go beyond the van um, and what I have to do is request City Council has to vote on it um, and Susan Wright the finance director is assisting me with the request so we have a couple of replacement items and then some new items that we would like to purchase through the gift account most of the money in the gift account is through like the annual appeal that we have, um, donations that are made in memory of someone, and so some of them have been ongoing, um, so some of it will be expended. Um, we're going to be hosting a Massachusetts Council on Aging Government Days here on March 30th, and typically who's included in that is the Ethics, Campaign and Political Finance, and Public Records, and 
at this point, I don't know if it's just for um, senior center directors or if it can be, oh, excuse me, board members, so I'll let you know more about it as I know about it. But it's, it was funny because I knew MCOA used to put this on and I was gonna do it myself by contacting the state departments to come in here. And they called, it was like right at the same time, and I said, okay, well, they can organize it. It'll be here. Um, and then the last, be here? Yep. yeah, it's gonna be here. Um, and probably the great room. And um, then the very last thing I had now that the mayor was here and uh, broached the subject of the social day room being uh, used by the rec department, that was the last thing I had on my, my schedule. So, is there going to be something room? in the next edition of Elder Vision about it? I mean, sorry, the Hot Street Chronicle? Um, I don't. I, I think that as things are really formalized, probably, but I don't think for this issue. If there, if Maybe when it's all done, it could be like a ribbon cutting ceremony or something. Yeah, or something. Because there's too. Many, you know, you, I don't want to have to say one thing and then really that's not how it's going to work yeah. out. And yeah. it's very preliminary right now. I mean, it's going to happen, but the preliminary work and what's happening internally and with both of our departments, you know, that's all right now on the table. But all you can say right now is it's going to, it's going to parks and, and recreation is going to move into that portion of the senior center. But that's about the only thing you can say, which is kind of skinny. So, Mike? So, do we as a council have to take a vote on that, or should we? Mm -hmm. Good. If I you'd mean, like to make a motion of some kind, uh, what would be the motion? I mean, it's a done deal. Know. It's a done deal. I mean, you, you know. Well, it should be a motion to support it. That would, that would get politically look good. Okay, Jim. I'd like to make a motion that we vote on to accept this as a, as a unit. Anybody want to second that? I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion on this? Uh, you understand what he's driving at? Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. One. We have one opposed. Any abstaining? Any abstaining? No. So. Oppose the rest. So the motion passes. So uh, my goal with the, the, this transition is that we still are able to offer what we offer okay. and do as much as we have been doing for seniors and that there's little disruption to the actual programming of what we do and who we are. Yeah. Is there a way we can divide the big room? Did yeah, we have a partition. Okay. Yeah, that's all part of the yeah. thought process. I thought about that. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Any questions about the director's report? One program that I'd like to bring up, half a dozen people in the last week or two have asked me what happened to the mayor's meeting that came here once a month. And I was going to grab him and he got up and left because he did promise us when he, at, before he was elected, he said, I will be there once a month to meet with the seniors. And we gave him a kind of a break there. He said he had other things to do, but now it's been a, a while and he hasn't come back. And I wasn't looking for the free pizza, but you know, there's a lot of people that the seniors that can get to him here and talk to them about their problems, and they're easy to get to them here. And they've approached me to ask, maybe just a couple okay. of coffee hours, or something right? Like that. Yeah. Um, I have my budget hearing on Monday, so I can ask him that. I know along the way people have asked me. This was pretty much after um, he stopped doing it. Yep. Um, you know, asked me about it, and I. I you know, mentioned it to the mayor and he was going to have a, a plan but I, you know, I, I don't know if he, he is doing it somewhere else um, not, none of the seniors that I talked to have any way to get to him without calling the office and trying to get a space okay. and then get to drive in there and, yeah. okay I'll mention that on um, Monday and you know I can't speak for the mayor so right no, I understand that but I uh, just you know kind of his feet near the fire so yeah. he's, he's thinking about it uh, what's the update on the travel club or travel coordinator? Yep, the travel club, we actually have met with Tours of Distinction about planning some trips. So there's some coming down the, the um, pike. And um, Heather is in contact with the, uh, hopefully the person who wants to still be the travel coordinator and how that's working. If it doesn't work out with him, then we believe we have another person who will do the travel. Okay. 
So it's, I think one of the first trips is scheduled for May. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if it all works out, then we'll be happy to get those going. Because mm -hmm. we love that revenue. <laughs> Love the revenue, but they, there's you know nice trips. It's a nice uh, addition to our program schedule. Yeah, it's a good thing to offer. Anything else on the director's report? Moving on to the building and grounds report. Okay, snow, snow, snow. <laughs> um, we've been very fortunate because um, <clears throat> they've been coming down and getting things plowed a little after quarter after eight, and then I did have. You know, I think Rich Parcelletti was a DPW about getting rid of a lot of the mounds of snow we had because of some of the big programs that were going to start coming down here with Five College, with, um, um, I'm sorry, everything else is escaping me, but <laughs> so that we have plenty of parking because the snow piles, which still are taking a little bit of the space, you know, it was like three spaces that the snow was taking over. So. They came down, and plus the visibility was very poor, which is a safety issue. So they, I called or emailed on one day, and they were down here the next morning by 7.30 doing it. So I'm very appreciative of that. Uh, we did have a problem uh, last week. The electrician, the city electrician, came here to put in a new outlet for us for the kitchen so that we could have a separate outlet for the warming cart. Um, so he thought instead of coming from the ceiling, he would come from the floor up and he drilled and water started coming up because we have radiant heat, which he didn't, he didn't even think about. I didn't think about Oops. it. And what happened next was that water then leaked on our heating cooling system, which created um, a situation where it went offline and we had no heat. Um, and we, one day we, I don't know, had like six different people, if not more, in here doing a variety of things with the building because of that. But also we had an issue on the roof with, um, I came in in the morning, went into the walk-in refrigerator, and there's water all over the floor because there was a leak. But that's because the kitchen has a flat roof and it iced up. And um, so anyway, there was a problem there. So the, the um, refrigeration, um, was here and um, Jim was here and changing out light bulb. I mean it was just like it was neat it was like wow people are paying attention to us and getting things done if you can so say everything's it, resolved. like a Chinese fire drill <laughs> so, so it, it was nice having all this hole in it. and uh, so we didn't have heat for about a day and a maybe a day in an afternoon it's better than drilling in there hitting a gas line so. yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But you know, if it was just over a fraction of an inch, he would have been okay. <laughs> That's all it takes. <laughs> so anyway, it was interesting. If anybody wants to see what it's like in the kitchen, it's behind the stove. How thick the concrete is in this building, because yeah. um, this is a whole concrete slab, and um, there's radiant heat in every room except for the activity room because of the wooden floor. So, and everything got taken care of. So that's, that's what I got for the building. So that was a pretty exciting week last week. Any questions on the building and grounds? Okay, let's yeah. move on to old business, which I think we can yeah, take care already. of. It. Is there anything other than old business that might let you bring up? How about new business? I have something. I think it's about time we revisited the Highland Valley Board of Directors business, where we try to try to encourage someone here to beyond the board of directors for Highland Valley, representing Northampton. We've had time for their uh, director to get his job settled, straightened out so that he's there. And we do need some representation because all of the state money for many, many programs for this area are all going through Highland Valley. So we should have a presence there somehow. Has he got his six months in? Oh yeah, he's got his six okay. months in. So he's permanent now. He's permanent. Uh, there's still problems over there, there's no doubt about that, but uh, the board, of, that particular board of directors is a corporate board of directors which has the power to hire, fire, and do everything else. They are a full board, not an advisory board like ourselves. And so uh, if we can think it over, if anybody would like to volunteer to do that, we need up to three people. 
One would be nice, three would be better. So uh, think it over. Contact uh, myself or Patty. Yeah. As a board member, you retain liability for the agency's decision. So all of you should know that prior to volunteering. Financial liability. But the city will back that up. So actually the city is taking the financial liability, not the person. Yeah. Yeah. But then again, uh, I checked on that, Bob. Uh, yeah. And there is a limit to the financial responsibility that the city will pick up. Uh huh. After our last discussion, I wanted to be positive. What on is that. the limit? Do you know? It's a percentage of what the entire deal is, what the entire lawsuit is. Oh, okay. But it will it will reflect financially on anyone who does it. Yeah. But if we don't. If Northampton is not represented out there, we have no liability. Right. Well, I still think we should be there, but uh, that is something to consider. So if there are any volunteers, contact either myself or Patty and uh, or Crystal and speak up whenever you want. You don't have to speak up right now if you don't want to. So the members, um, we've had people who were community members to be one of the advisory yes. members. So it isn't like all three of yeah. you have to be from the board. If you do know someone who in the community who would be interested in in serving for representing Northampton, that would also be. Did you contact the lady that lives up at? Uh, no, I haven't. I should contact her because she asked me if she wanted to be on the board. Yeah. Yeah. And we took the, the lady that you and I shared. Yeah, right. Taken right to her. I forget what her name is now. Yeah, I could do it offhand, but I got to bring it down. Yeah. Yeah, I could. Uh, I'll contact her. She's over at Lathrop Home. Yeah. She does need a ride. That's her only problem. But uh, she was a uh, East Hampton board member. Mm -hmm. She left East Hampton for Lathrop Home in Northampton. So they put her on a, uh, what do they call it? Uh, um, not affiliated with a particular city. Right. Uh, but that was a temporary, that's usually a temporary situation. So she may be off it now. She was a member at large, right? Member at large, that's what I'm trying to think of, yeah. So she was a member at large. They put her to keep her on the board because she's been there for many years. She did a, Meals on Wheels program before she went to the board and all that sort of thing. Okay. Anything else on uh, new business? Okay. I think we, uh, you get your announcements down here. Corn, beef, and cabbage, the annual uh, safety fair, and the next council meeting is April 9th. Can I give a motion to adjourn? Is April 9th, Good Friday? No. No. Good Friday is Friday. Our meetings are well, on Thursday. We're on the Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> and it's never a good Friday. I knew it was that first week. <laughs> okay, good Friday. Right, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Can we hear the motion? Give you a shot. I second it. Okay, we got second motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah.